Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this tech tip, I'll be looking at the Hyper-V feature for Windows 10. The aim of this tech tip is to give you an overview of Hyper-V and to explain how the technology works. By the end of this video, you'll have a high-level understanding of Hyper-V for Windows 10. In future videos, I'll cover Hyper-V in a lot of detail. However, at the moment, it's important that you first understand the basics. So, let's get started. So, what exactly is Hyper-V? Well, Hyper-V is essentially a hypervisor that comes built in to 64-bit editions of Windows 10 Professional, Windows 10 Enterprise and Windows 10 Education. This is all very well, but what exactly is a hypervisor? To put it simply, a hypervisor is a platform that allows you to build and host virtual machines. Virtual machines, as I like to describe them, are computers that run entirely in software. Don't worry if this doesn't make sense just yet. I promise as we go through this Hyper-V training, all will become clear. For now, all you need to understand is that Hyper-V is a hypervisor, and a hypervisor allows you to create and run virtual machines. In the world of computing, there are two types of hypervisor. These are Type 1 and Type 2 hypervisors. Let me try to explain how both types of hypervisor work. Let's first look at a Type 1 hypervisor. Type 1 hypervisors are sometimes referred to as bare metal or native hypervisors. So how does a Type 1 hypervisor actually work? With a Type 1 hypervisor, you first have what is referred to as the hardware layer. The hardware layer is nothing more than a regular physical computer. On top of the hardware layer, the administrator then installs the hypervisor. You can think of a hypervisor as a very basic operating system. The job of the hypervisor is to manage resources, such as the CPU and RAM, on the host system. With the hypervisor in place, the administrator can then build out virtual machines. Understand, each virtual machine will run its own operating system and is allocated its own CPU, RAM and hard disk space from the host system. As you can see, with a hypervisor, you're able to run multiple operating systems at the same time on just one physical computer. The advantage of Type 1 hypervisors is that each virtual machine is able to access the hardware assigned to it on the host system, directly through the hypervisor. Of the two types of hypervisor, Type 1 hypervisors typically offer the best performance. Let's compare this to a Type 2 hypervisor. With a Type 2 hypervisor, once again you have the hardware layer. Remember, the hardware layer is nothing more than a typical computer. However, this time, rather than installing a hypervisor, the administrator instead installs a traditional operating system. With the operating system installed, the administrator would then install the hypervisor. With setups like this, the hypervisor is typically some kind of software application that is designed to act like a hypervisor. With the hypervisor in place, the administrator can then create virtual machines. As you can see, in order to access the hardware on the host computer, the virtual machines first have to go through the hypervisor and then through the host operating system. This additional layer makes Type 2 hypervisors slower than their Type 1 counterparts. However, Type 2 hypervisors are usually cheaper to implement and easier to configure. So now that you understand the difference between Type 1 and Type 2 hypervisors, where exactly does Hyper-V fit into all of this? Is Hyper-V a Type 1 or a Type 2 hypervisor? If you answered Type 2, I understand why you said this. Since the Windows 10 operating system first needs to be installed before Hyper-V can be installed, you'd think that Hyper-V is a Type 2 hypervisor. However, this is incorrect. Hyper-V, believe it or not, is actually a Type 1 hypervisor. Let me try to explain why. First of all, imagine that you have a computer. This computer forms the hardware layer for our hypervisor. Next, you install the Windows 10 operating system onto the computer. So far, this looks like a Type 2 hypervisor setup, but bear with me, all will become clear. By default, the Hyper-V feature is not installed. So you would think when it is installed, the hypervisor would be laid right on top of the operating system layer. However, this is not the case. When Hyper-V is installed on a Windows 10 computer, two things happen. First, when the hypervisor is created, 
it actually takes the place of the operating system. In other words, the hypervisor is actually placed on top of the hardware layer, not the operating system layer. So what exactly has happened to the Windows 10 operating system? This brings me on to the second point. After creating the hypervisor, the Windows 10 operating system is converted into something of a virtual machine itself and sits on top of the hypervisor. In Hyper-V terminology, this is called the root or parent partition. When virtual machines are created in Hyper-V, these virtual machines are created alongside the root or parent partition. This allows both the parent and the virtual machines to access the hardware directly through the hypervisor. Although this setup is neither apparent nor obvious to the user, under the hood, believe it or not, this is what has happened. This concludes our very high-level overview of Hyper-V and how it works. In the next video, I'll look at the prerequisites that have to be met in order to install Hyper-V onto a Windows 10 system. This will require us to look at the Hyper-V install requirements. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. For more videos, please see our YouTube page. Many thanks and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.